Well, ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. And I'm Ring Roo. And folks, uh, another game today from the ongoing Steel Division 2 Season 2 play. We are Aja Chedron. So, Rang, who's meeting us here, and uh, what are they bringing to the party? Well, on the left hand side in blue, we have ourselves a very big gym with a Vanguard income with 25th Panzer Grenadier. And on the right hand side, we have Genshi playing as the 44th Guard Infantry, also with a Vanguard income. So, we saw the 25th on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. What's going to be different here about this play as opposed to, let's say, what happened on Tuesday? Um, obviously, out, out, obviously, outside the results. Outside, outside of the result, obviously. I'm not going to get yeah. into the result. Go watch it if you want to see what we're talking about. But um, what's the difference here, I would say, on this kind of map? How's it, will it be better than what we saw on Tuesday or worse like suited? How are we, think, how are we thinking? Uh, is, is that a pretty good map for 25th compared to the other one? It's a lot of nice fortified positions. You know, town's kind of a fun fight if you get the infantry in there, source troops with vestiges and all of that. Same time, 44th is a real powerhouse of, of a Russian division. They have nothing fancy. They have no real tricks up their sleeves. They're just coming at you with a very standard but very powerful game style. You know what? I think we need that sometimes. Mm-hmm. I yeah, really like think we do. Mm -hmm. The most cookie cutter Soviet division, and I'm saying that with all due respect. Oh, well, Lord knows we wouldn't want to offend the Soviets at any point. Of course, no, I, I don't want to disappear from history. <laughs> One, well, some people would say that the Soviets are out of history for the moment, but uh, that's what they want you to think. <laughs> Shockingly enough, though, the Otomochiki Open does not get the initial town uh, flags. I am flabbergasted. We actually see a 13 11 in favor of Big Jim. Yes. Yeah, not really much use of the flamethrower team just getting one PTRS into the town, but that's it. While Big Jim actually relying a little bit more on those light armored cars, which are gonna work fantastically in a town fight such as this. That's good, because there's also a 45 mil uh, anti-tank gun that's gonna cause quite a bit of hassle in that town. We can already see the PTRSs also have no trouble making kills. Yeah, and also T-34, which, yep, kills them both easy peasy. Well, there's a stroke coming in rather slowly on the south, and a very, very early Commandant. That is actually very surprising. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, and all the light vehicles are now dead in the town, so we're back to a 12-12. Meanwhile, up to the north, we are going to see, I think, a Pack 38 trying to slide forward, maybe get some shots on this half-track? No, it looks like that would be the IG-18 shove in just a moment here. But again, see so just maneuvering his way into that middle forest, and that's gonna work for off a row. The tank just need keys that are going to run into an IG-18, it seems. Which is having an issue in terms of seeing anything. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, the Pac-38 is there. They're gonna greet the, uh, the Russians with all hospitality. Oh my god, you're aligning for like four days. Oh my gosh, that is oh. a... Okay, I was like, APCR how? Shells. Yeah. No, there you know, he's got those turned off. Oh, okay, huh. Oh yeah, he did. And unfortunately, the Superiors never get to see their uh, killers. Uh, stuck in the back of a truck. Uh, they had a very Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade moment there. Mm -hmm. um, and as black plumes of smoke rise over top of the southern town, what that does mean is not that we have a new Pope, but rather that we have new ownership in that town. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, I, I do love those like recon vehicles. I said it last cast, but against 44, who has T 34 76s, it is a little bit more better shooter than a town fight. Better armor, a gun that can kill medium and light tanks, two machine guns. I mean, they're, they're really deadly in fights such as this. That is certainly true. We are seeing a couple of airsets trooping. Really, the last line of immediate defense here, and a rather wow, a rather plucky Pack 40, putting shots way downtown and actually getting a couple of kills from guard squads in the town itself. Mhm. Mm real, real sneaky position there, but yeah, he's got a pretty decent line of sight on certain areas of said town with Pack 40. Certainly true. Now it's kind of funny as well. We are going to see an IG-18. He's still in this. He's still in this forest on the that middle saddle hills. 
Mm -hmm. So while the oh the crew killed and gun jammed. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I was waiting for the IG team to kind of creep out and fire around into him for like 50 meters. But alas, that's, that's not the case. No, please think with these not Niki are going to go and kill the IG team pretty damn quickly, I'd imagine. Mm-hmm. Helmet for troops in the meantime being called in from the north, looking to re-secure that forest. Uh, and while there's an, still a 120 mil stovepipe actually engaging the north... Um, how are things developing outside of this town, would you say? I mean, the town obviously is very much in Soviet hands. Uh, the Soviets are doing a pretty good job just keeping up the momentum in the middle north. I mean, they got the northern Trin Hill under their control, and in the middle, the, the getting onto the other hillside, which is, if you can pretty much secure that hill, I'd say you pretty much run the mats in most cases. Just because it offers such unparalleled overlook over the rest of the rest of the battlefield. That does seem fairly accurate. Um, there's been this little plucky Pack 38 in the middle, Matthias. Uh, that just had a couple of really nice, super duper easy kills. Um, and those flamingo troops that had been slated to start the counterattack, well, they're not going very much uh, in terms of distance because of that snipiri. That is just, well. Does some really, really solid work. Yeah. Almost as much as watching this Stug be engaged by the world's slowest artillery shells. Very, very slow, but they do do damage from Slatsy hit. But now he can't do anything. Now it's just it's nope. a freak out time. He only has HC shells. Yeah, it's one of those things I never really anticipated those 76-2 artillery pieces to be quite that terrifying. Uh, ME-410 makes a gun run, excuse me, a bombing run at the Tanko de Sant Niki and successfully pins down the entire uh, infantry push. Well done there. But I, you're, you're exactly right. Same with the IG-18s, because you just see heat shells, like 75, 90 millimeter penetration. Yeah, it's not going to kill anything. And then it, it like, knocks out a stug or... Would sometimes even a Tiger, a T-34, it, it can be pretty surprising. You know what else is going to get knocked out? All this German infantry in this southern town, the 152 off map, is going to start Ooh. to engage in about 20 seconds here. Would not be surprised to see this be kind of followed up by a rather huge push. Yeah, yeah, because you got all the guards and sapperies just, just outside the artillery barrage, ready to counterattack. Well, all that do is kind of make those uh, MP44s take cover here. And there's no anti-tank, really, outside of these couple light vehicles. And, yep, first thing's already hitting. We see dead tracks, dead trucks, and poor, you know, PBIs going here at the same time. Yeah, everyone's, everyone's dying, Khan. Everyone's getting blown to bits. Bits and pieces. And really, really brave decision to throw Ogden Machiki in, but I guess, you know, from the points value that you can get from it, I mean, probably a fantastic call. Wow, that was a really good artillery barrage. Holy crap, and he's, he's following it up fantastically. That is, that's how you do an off-map artillery, guys. Even as he shells his own troops to the 122. Here it comes. Yeah, he's legitimately, he's <laughs> legitimately shelling his own troops right now. He's just motivating them to move up. This is not the Imperial Guard, this is Soviet Russia. <laughs> we have commissars for that. I mean, they've got commissars in the Imperial Guard, too, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, Big Jim, perhaps seeing the danger here, bringing in three more squads of infantry, trying desperately to get some line up here to really hold that town. Mm -hmm. Bit of a losing proposition at this point, though. Yeah, he doesn't have much of a foothold in there anymore. He's getting some, like, more pounder and deers and less out trooping, but again, he really just has a good, good grip on the town. A couple of artillery pieces being brought on, and we have a 105 to the north, we have a 105 to the south, and both of them are engaging anti-tank pieces. Interesting call. 
At this point, I'd be using every last bit of uh, artillery and anything I had to target this town. Mm hmm Blow it up. Exactly. Exactly. I don't care about the damn property values. It's not. It's no use to me if if they have it. But yeah, it's it's not not looking too good for for Big Jim. He's really been put on on the back foot. Just the rest of the map is not developing at all to his favor. And can see, yeah, he's got really good defensive positions up north and down south now. Well, what can I say? I mean, that artillery push was perfectly timed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was absolutely bang on. And a lot of Germans got kaboomed in the banging. Well, and he's, and he's reinforcing success, which is exactly what you should be doing. He's putting mm -hmm. a holding force, which is still outnumbering the Germans in each of their sectors. And he's pouring tanks and infantry and vehicles galore. There's an SU-152 SU down there? Yes, there is. Uh, so that's going to cause quite a bit of hassle. So wherever you look, the map is bleeding. Mm-hmm. And yet somehow, despite it bleeding, it's all fascista blood. <laughs> okay, we've got the 105s, and... Yeah, they currently just trying to knock out some major tank guns here and there. Really... I say most times in a town fight... But you can usually just win town fights with, with mortars and like close range artillery. Mm -hmm. Just try and bombard the hell out of it. And I think that's what a big gym needs. He, he's bringing in some flak, as well as some more armored cars, but those armored cars aren't really going to help out all that much when, when it's T-34s, T-76s in a town. Now that lone Stug might be able to take out that T-34, but it's... Not going well, which is just very, very bizarre to say. Mm -hmm. There we go. But fear not, we also know what the uh, command and control is. We actually have a TU coming in and saying to the Commandant, I see you, and here comes 500 kilograms of bombs right for your consumption. So we could see a very, very big bit of investment go down here. I say big from a veterancy perspective. No, somehow he manages to survive. But now would be a very good time for me to think about relocating your commandant. Mm -hmm. Probably probably a little bit rest rich. Find find a nice forest to occupy. Yeah, I don't care how many knights cross, you know Oh my gosh, knights cross? Yeah, and how many knights yeah, cross you have. Time to off, go. Buddy. Exactly. Oof. And a super tight, almost non-existent, actually completely non-existent, uh, line of sight here from that T-3476. Taking out one of those bare few anti-air pieces being possessed by the German right here. I think of the artillery barrage, I think it's coming at an absolutely perfect time. If this, all the P-Crans coming right through, this could be devastating. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, that uh, is just... Perfect. If it works. And it looks like it will. Yep, that was <laughs> that was very well done. Man. Genzi is a oh my gosh. He is a lord of war with that artillery. And look, he, he's gonna rush in now the T thirty four. Going in guns blazing. That's I'll what you do it. after Arceus. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> I'm actually surprised he's not being more aggressive with this SU-76 coming around the southern part of this town. Mm -hmm. But like a wolf among sheep, there's only one Stug that can cause him any hassles whatsoever. And this infantry start to fight? No, just the one squad, basically. Yeah, the leader nearby is definitely safe and big Jim right now as those Panzer Grenadiers are staying in the fight. The Sug comes in, Panzer Faust go off, and that could have gone much worse. Yes, it could have. So, good good job of having the leader nearby. Um, Naval Verfer being attacked and throwing its uh, rounds at the East Saddle Hill. Barely ever see these guys. I have to just at least watch this for half a second, you know? Oh, it's a 42 one as well. So yes, it is. It doesn't mess about. 
It doesn't mess about, but it's at such great distance, the amount of just <laughs> spread is just... Man. Yeah. I probably would have been better, better suited to maybe... It seems like he's putting a lot of resources trying to regain the middle. Which, to an extent, is a good idea. But... Maybe he's a, you know, he's the big, you know, F off rocket artillery to barrage a tightly clustered Soviet infantry in the town rather than trying to knock out a few field guns. Well, especially when you have all these light vehicles there in the first place to follow it up and to kind of continue to suppress whatever is there. Yeah, exactly. And Gen Season they use his last off map, it seems, right on top of the Germans again. And considering how the last two worked, this one should also be pretty brutal. It is going to miss, probably miss the peak events getting outside of that, so this probably has the smallest number of targets overall, but we might even see a dead stoke from this. They got panicked pretty hardcore. Mm hmm. Yep, getting some fallbacks here. Now, unfortunately for him, he doesn't have a ton of armor. He's got one 1942 in the town. I guess the SU-152, I think, it went down to the south. Yep, that poor guy, that assault gun, didn't have, even have enough time to really scream. And now they have P-Guns caught out in the open. Yeah. Which is not a good place to be uh, caught, especially when there's a bunch of angry Russians shooting at you. And, oh god, the anti-tank rifle on the church just sniping a 2-3 run there. No, I wasn't even looking at that. I'm seeing all this air, air power coming in from the Russians as well. Panicked one, killed another, and... There's still some crazy sight lines being happening here. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez, that rocket plane. <laughs> like, the perfect hit. The 152 says, I will give my life for the cause, and starts rushing on forwards. I think the scout a bit. He's gonna go out all chrome in the shiny. <laughs> That's true. Witness me! <laughs> Trying to run over the path uh, so that's true. <laughs> you know, I, I part of me was wondering, I was like, I wonder if that can, can actually happen. Oh, uh, so I, I kind of wish in that scenario that could happen. Just just imagine just a jeep coming right at you. It's just something out of battlefield. Oh yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, and it has a little bit more, you know, veracity to it than having somebody ride a horse at you and you know, having the horse kill you and, yeah, whole thing. Um, but more off map. Nothing really being invested just yet. Looks like the SU-76 is going to start coming down here instead. Not sure about the particular decision on this one, but uh, that's what he wants to do. Yeah, yeah, and for, for now, actually, Big Jim is making a pretty decent foothold up north. We're getting just a tad of that northern hill under his control, but not, not for too long, however. Well, we for much longer when this pack 40 goes and takes out this uh, T-34-85. Yeah, well, one thing I have been surprised by is a rather meager investment in terms of committed heavier tanks from our friends of the 44th. Yeah, it's not, not really been too much. It's just some 76s, some SU-76s as well. Just nothing, nothing crazy. I think that's really just due to the fact that Ray has been fighting, he didn't really need any P-3485s or anything really that heavy. Just just the cheap medium tanks and tank destroyers. It's, it's working just just well enough. Is this one of those where we're going, we don't need roads moments? Pretty much. Okay, just making sure. Oh my gosh, guards engaging the Stug. This is this is one of those cringe moments when, okay, yeah, the SU-76 comes from behind and absolutely butt munches here. No. And if not him, we saw the IL-2 coming in with those rockets. How will this flank work? No, nah, because the flank got distracted by some infantry. Yeah. Now it will. Especially since the one thing the 25th just is so poor on is the infantry-based AT. Because it could be a Fuhrer throwing out the hero smoke grenade. <laughs> awesome. Uh, it's the hunt. The hunt is on. 
Yes, it is. The thing is, is that the fox will not be kept out of the hen house. Mm -hmm. And I just realized the commandant's name is Batista. What kind of German are you? It's a very, very Italian or maybe Sp his, you know, Spanish name. Am I wrong on that one? Yeah, it, it definitely sounds Italian. I'm just, sorry, I'm just watching this SU-76 trying yeah, to run down the stug. Me too. And the SU oh my gosh, the stug's going to get the first shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, clutch. Uh, clutch. Worth mentioning, uh, the hillside is back in German hands. It's engaging actually an SU-152 from the Stug here. It has lost one of its number. And with all these Sturm Pioneers going into this forest trying to push back these guards... Guards are not going to light the fire and flames there, but, but, I, I don't want to count those guys out too quickly. They're actually being quite feisty. Yeah, they're holding out for a while, and now they're not holding out anymore. Well, one's not, but, um, yeah, the other wow, gets hit by bombs. Yeah. So now the push that was is no longer. You know, it's a southern SU-152. I'm not sure he's... Oh my gosh, we're gonna, it's going to be between Stug and 152. Holy bejesus. Big Jim sees the destructive power of the SU-152 killing his Stug with a single shot, and he says, you know what, screw it. I'm out. Yeah, and that'll be a good game. 700 kill difference. The field battery. He only has five kills, but that man... That was a king right there. Yeah. Berijin. 45 mil? Yes, sir. Yeah. From the Wasa side, the ME410, decent enough. There was a couple of packs I feel like that were probably quite solid. Oh, okay. Noctigal over here. What was that four kills? A couple of infantry squads? Yeah, that's pretty good stuck play. Certainly true. Other than that, maybe a flat, flat 20 mil, and that's about it. Yeah. All in all, though, um, very, very solid replay to kind of finish our coverage this week for the SD2 League. Mm-hmm. Just, just good overall play. Yeah, really from both sides, I think, actually. I think that, unfortunately, Big Jim just didn't know, not know what to do when those artillery shells started coming down from the yeah, off-map. Just really got to commend the use of off-map here, and the timing was perfect on, on both of those initial strikes. Yes, it was quite successful. But, folks, uh, that's going to do it for us today. Um, I guess until next week, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.